want to ask you just one simple question tonight in this special Christmas service where what we've done is we brought all the adult classes together and wanted you to come and, and be here in the sanctuary tonight and some of our kids are in the back but we wanted to come together I know you've heard a lot about Christmas we've been studying the Advent on Sunday mornings God has met with us and we've talked about the joy we've talked about the peace the hope and the love that comes to us as gifts at Christmas time and I hope that through the weeks that we've been preparing and we've been talking about the the love that the Lord has sent to us from heaven through his son Jesus hope that somehow it's caused the lights and the trees and the banquets and all of the the hustle and the bustle of Christmas to perhaps slow down just a little bit so that you could get a good good look at what it really means what it's all really really about this song that we just sang worship we've come to worship that's the main message that I want in my own life in my family it's the message that I want for our church is that we have come to worship we worship with our life we worship with our mind and our activities we worship with our families it's not just something we go to Many folks, and sometimes we're even guilty of saying, well, worship starts at 10. Worship starts at 1045, 6 o'clock. How many of you know worship began the moment you received Jesus Christ into your life? That's when worship begins. And we live our, we live our lives not common. We don't fall back into the world systems or philosophies when we get saved. Sometimes it's good, you know, people get saved and they're all fired up and then well-meaning Christian will sometimes walk by and say, boy, I like them new Christians. They, they just get so fired up. They're just, man, they're on fire. They'll settle down. I hope I never settle down. I hope I never settle down. I hope all of my life I live as if number one he's coming in the next 10 minutes and I hope that I live thankful for the change that happened in my life you see I was heavy in my heart I was carrying the weight of the whole world man I didn't know what it was to have peace and real guidance and truth working in my life not until I accepted Jesus and when I accepted him, that night I remember sleeping like I'd never slept before. And I remember the joy of being able to talk to anybody. I mean anybody. I went to work and I just wanted to share with anybody. Didn't care what their religion was. Didn't care whether they were Christians or not Christians. I wanted to share with everybody. I'm so glad I didn't settle down. I was in Walmart the other day. And I noticed this cash register lady, you know, the lines were long. And if you work at, at Middletown's Walmart, would you talk to the manager? They need to hire more cash registers, folks. This poor lady was working so diligent and hard. And I know it wasn't really her fault, but I just watched her as she went through the motions. And one after the other, she's just bringing stuff up and just has the look of just sadness on her face almost. And I noticed that she said to the person in front of me as I was watching her work with people she did you find everything you needed and she's just running things through didn't even wait for them to respond and when it was all done thank you for shopping Walmart did you find everything you needed sir and I looked at her and I said yes I did thank you as a matter of fact I found a little too much here and she just looked at me like you're not supposed to answer me you're just supposed to And when it got to the end of the sale, she handed me a receipt and she said, thank you for shopping Walmart. And I said, thank you. I said, you have a really, really great evening. And I pray that you have a great Christmas. And she just looked at me and it's like her, like she didn't know how to respond. She was just like, yeah, you too. And I got away from that and I walked down and got in the car and I thought, 
you know, that's sometimes the way it just gets. Not only that way in life where we don't appreciate and we don't, we take for granted and we think things just become common. You know? She didn't really mean to tell me, thank you for shopping Walmart. She didn't care. But when I stopped and I just, you know, interrupted her world right there for a moment, I could see there was a real person there. And just like everybody else, someone who desperately, desperately needs to find the peace and the love and the purpose and the reality of what life is all really about. Somebody who needs to experience life. Someone who needs to know that every minute counts. We go home to families. We go home to husbands and wives and children. We go home to traditions this year at Christmas time. It's so important not to lose sight of what it's all really about and who it's all really about. So the question is this, has, has Christmas come home for you yet? Weeks of studying the Advent, has, has Christmas come home to you? Has Christmas come to your house? Are you thankful? You know, I'm thankful for Audrey. You know, she was in a car accident the other day, totaled a car, airbag went off, had to, have, had to drive a, a rental car. I heard about it, and you know what, Audrey, when they first told me, fear struck in my heart. And I thought, I gotta, I gotta find her. I gotta go find Audrey. And they said, she's okay, she's home, she called. She said she wouldn't be by the church now. <laughs> she was on her way to the church. And I thought, my goodness, right then and there for the next 15, 20 minutes, I thought about Audrey. And I thought about how much I love her and how she's been influential in my life. And she's been some my Sunday school teacher when I was young. And she always just, we call her Mamaw. She's Mamaw in this church. I thought about how consistent and godly she is. And how one night I remember standing in the hospital room when her husband, Vernon, died. And I remember her lifting her little hands up in the air and saying, praise the Lord. Because she knew in confidence that man was standing before the Lord. I've watched her at different times in her life be consistent with her faith and her love for God. And that, that thankfulness and that appreciation, taking everything into the heart and becoming real in her life in every way, that's what she lives out. And that's what's important for every one of us to truly be the kind of people, to truly be the kind of Christians that don't take for granted the things that are in front of us, like the salvation that we've experienced, the relationships that we have as a body of Christ, the one that you're sitting next to right now, or you will be later, the one you go home to, the one you cook dinner for, the one that you snuggle up next to you on the sofa next to the fire. Don't take for granted the people that are, in our, in, that are in our lives, the people that God has given to you, especially at Christmas. And don't take for granted what you've been given in your heart and life. Jesus Christ has come and brought redemption and salvation to our lives. And it ought to never get old. Sometimes we treat God like this lady at Walmart did, me. Thanks for coming, God. Thanks for coming, God. Thanks for showing up in my time of crisis. I'll get back to my life now. You know, it was the shepherds that heard the major announcement, the great news. As they were on that hillside, they literally were the first, many people say they were the first to hear the good news and the big announcement of the star and, and the baby. But if you think about it, they weren't. The very first one to get the news was Zacharias. Zachariah was over there in, in, in the Holy of Holies doing the work, the duty of the temple when the angel appeared to him and told him about the good news. But when he received it, he kind of doubted. And in that process of doubt, he was made mute for nine months. But I find it interesting if you read in that scripture about the story, 
You notice that the people in the temple, the people that were in the church, the leaders, the religious leaders, when Zechariah came out of the Holy of Holies there, they knew something had happened. They, it's, the Bible says that they, they saw that something had taken place. But if you really read what it says, it goes on and says, and when his administration was finished, he went home. And I thought God sent the message to the religious leaders, sent the message to the church first about the Messiah. But the church was so busy. They were so busy doing the work of the church that they missed it all together. Zechariah missed it and the leaders around him missed it. The scribes, the Pharisees, the Levites, the descendants of Abraham, they were all there. They were part of the process of looking forward to the Messiah and they missed it. As did the folks in Bethlehem when the very child of God was there in their midst on that night, the star over time. They knew something had to be up. They knew there was something different. But so busy in their lives. Thanks, thank you, Lord. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for shopping Walmart. So common. Sometimes we treat the things of God so common. It causes us to misplace our own commitment and our own dedication and our own fervor and fire for the Lord. It causes us to literally get weak in our own relationship. It causes our worship to become less to where we even start relegating like others do to worship at 1045. Things can become common even in the church so when the Lord tried to get the message that the Messiah was going to be born and this, the child was going to be given, the Savior was coming, and the church ignored it, God went to a hillside and found some shepherds. And the Bible says that they listened. They listened. You wonder why Jesus ate with sinners? You wonder why he was always the guy looking for all the ones nobody else wanted? Because they needed him. God, help us to need him again. Help us to need him again. We become so professional in our religion. Things become so commonplace sometimes. I'm still thankful today. I'm thankful that I had the mind to hear the message and that I responded like the shepherds did. It said, with haste. With haste, they went trailing to find the little baby. I want to be found faithful and I want to be found chasing after God. In my own experience, in my own life, and I don't ever want to become common. I don't ever want my relationship or grace that's been given in my life to be treated carelessly. I want to live out the hope and the, the love that he's poured into my life. Every day I want to be thankful for the family and the friends and the church that God has placed in my path. I'm thankful that at 18 years old I wandered into the Harlan Park Church of God. I'm thankful on that night I sat on the back pew and I listened to the preaching and I listened to the singing of the choir and I remember thinking, wow, this is an amazing amazing church and here I am 30 years later how was I to know the passion God would put in my own heart and the plan that he would have you don't know the purposes that he that he has for you the destiny that he has for you it's outlined in every common thing that you do I came to this church eight, 30 years ago on an invitation someone said you need to go down and check out that church in Middletown and I remember thinking, eh, okay, I'll go check it out. I've been here ever since. The common things, the small details of life, God's working in them for you. Everything matters. Every step is ordered of the Lord. Don't take lightly or treat carelessly the things that God is doing in your life. Don't. Don't let Christmas become common. Christmas was the announcement of the Son of God coming to earth. No longer would it be necessary, Mike, for there to be bedside stories for the little children in Jerusalem. 
of a hope and a promise of a one day Messiah coming to the, to the salvation and the rescue of God's people. No, he had come. The Lord came. And all through this Christmas season, it's so easy to get distracted, to get our minds away from the true messages of what Christianity and the gospel is all about. The gospel of Christmas. Christ come to the earth. And then, of course, as we celebrate Advent, we always are reminded of the fact that we are in the same spot they were. They had prophecies from Isaiah, prophecies all throughout the word and Jeremiah, so many different places where the word of God told us of the coming days of Messiah. Different scriptures that said where he'd be born, the things that he would suffer, the way that he would love. We're in the same spot when we're reading scriptures about the fact that the signs of the times will be clear. We'll see it in everything that's happening around the world, in the political unrest, in the economy, and in the things around us that show us that the Messiah is coming again. We're in the same spot they were. We tell our children one day the trumpet will sound. One day the Lord's coming back on a cloud. One day he's going to call his children forward. The dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain. How many of you love that verse? Shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I'm looking forward to that promise fulfilled in my own life. Are you? I'm looking forward to the coming of the Lord. And so I don't want things in my life to become common when it comes to God. I'm not in this for the business. I'm not in this just for the, the social awareness and the country club attitude. I'm not in this so that you and I can have a good life together with good friendships. It's good to have all of those things and thank God for the brotherhood. But I'm in this thing because I'm looking to the East Day once again, just like they were so long ago. And the star I'm looking for now, it's got a trumpet behind it. And that star is the bright and the morning star that's coming for the church of God. It's coming for you and for me. And when I say the church of God, I'm talking about the Baptists, the Methodists, the Presbyterians, and anybody who's found Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior and have accepted him into their lives. That hope and that promise that we have in our own hearts now as we look to the east, as we know the promise is coming. I'm thankful, I'm thankful for all of these things. I'm thankful that he sent word to the church. I'm thankful for the spoken and the written word of God. I'm thankful that we have that hope inside of us tonight. Don't let these things, these treasures, these priceless, priceless truths become common in your own life or with your family. At this Christmas time, in just a few days, we'll celebrate. I hope you found a family altar. I hope you've gathered your children close together. I hope you'll come and you'll be in church on Sunday morning at Christmas time. Someone said, and all over the, the whole community and all around the world, people, the big debate is, will the, will the church meet on Christmas? I don't know about you, but I couldn't bear the thought of us not having church on Jesus' birthday. I can't, I can't even bear the thought of us not coming together for a worship service on Christmas. Somebody says, are you having church over there at Stratford Heights? I said, you better believe we are. Not because we're anything, but because it's his grand and glorious day. Why would the church of all places close Walmart? Yes, close down the banks, close down the schools, close everything else, but somebody open up the church on Christmas. That's my heart that we be what we're supposed to be. Our mission should match the great commission. And if we say we care about the lost and if we say we love the Lord and we embrace and worship him with all of our hearts, we ought to prove that with our actions. Prove it with who we are in this community. And so yes, we'll worship Sunday. 10 a.m. We're going to have a special time. I'm bringing all the children up. We're going to have a children's message and then we're going to talk about Jesus and lighting of the last candle, the Jesus candle for Advent. And we're going to celebrate him. And I won't keep you long so you can go to your dinners and you can open up your gifts and spend time with your family, which is important. But we are going to have church on Christmas. We're going to be together for him to honor him. The church will not ignore him on Christmas Day. It's so important that we don't allow 
the busyness and the commercialism to take away the importance of who we are. We are the headquarters for God. We're the headquarters for God. We're his mouthpiece to this community. We're his hands extended. Thank you for all the many, the baskets and the food and the toys and all the families that were ministered to this year. I'm proud of the fact that our church works so diligently to try and minister to hurting families at Christmas. I'm thankful that we work hard to try to find those who are going through times of depression and sickness and heartache at this time and we try to bring comfort. I'm thankful for that. We can do so much more. But I'm thankful that we have a heart for it. And there will always be a church that wants to reflect who Christ is. Sister Cindy came to me tonight before church and thanked me because Sunday they had a flat tire in the parking lot and two rescuing Christian men went out to the parking lot and changed their tire for them. And she just came in and said, you have no idea what that meant to me and Steve. I'm thankful that we're brothers and we're sisters and when we go through things, we go through them together. And we look to help one another. It's important that we don't take lightly this relationship, that we don't treat carelessly the things of God, that we make Christmas something very special, not only once a year, but all throughout the year, and that we have a sense of expectancy, that we live in a sense and in a spirit of expectancy every day. I don't want to take church lightly I don't want to take worship lightly. I don't ever want to come together and, and us not have a purpose and a mission. Every time the doors are open, there's someone who will come forward perhaps to accept Jesus into their life. I learned a long time ago that I don't, I don't make an altar call based on the program. I make an altar call based on the gospel. That people come a lot of times ready to receive the Lord before a song is ever sung or before a message is ever preached. Someone is watered and a grandmother's prayed and another grandfather has quoted scriptures and taught them all of their lives and spent all of those years pouring into them and being part of the, the vessel that God uses. And then sometimes God will allow the church to be the place where they'll come to get the invitation. And it's just so important for us to remember how serious every moment is. I tell the choir on a regular basis, this service today, this church is 96 years old, but this service today, it's the most important service in the history of this church. More important than any of the grandiose days, the heritage days, and the many days where the big time preachers had visited and come through our doors. Many big revivals and many weeks where we went with the power of God was falling and people were getting saved. As good as those were, this now is the most important service in the history of this entire church's heritage. Why? Because this is the hour, the moment where the Holy Spirit is working yet again in this moment to bring people to him. This has to be treated seriously and sacredly and reverently because this is our hour, the opportunity to be used even in this moment to reach into the hearts and lives of others. Do you know what I'm saying tonight? Christmas, it's not just a holiday. It's important that we understand that God is still moving, still working. He, man, the sky was filled with the star and filled with the angels that night. And from that night forward, Messiah has been given to the earth and he is still being used tonight. We're still, we're a part of the Christmas story right now. We're part of it. You say, I don't understand. That was 2,000 years ago. From that time to this, the Messiah is still doing what he came to do, destroy the works of the enemy and to save the lost. It's still happening, and we're part of the Christmas story. So as we recognize and understand the seriousness and the sacredness of all this holiday, this season means, 
then we'll worship. We'll worship differently. We'll move a little slower and we'll catch eyes of those we love in the lobby as we're moving in and out. We'll be tender and careful when we sing, when we hear preaching, when we read our word, and when we sit around our tables this week with our families. We'll be tender in our hearts. He looked over Jerusalem and he said, how oft I would have gathered you together. How oft I would have gathered you close to my bosom. I said, mother hen doth her little chicks, but you would not. Let's not ever be guilty of treating carelessly this beautiful, beautiful season, the gift of God to the earth, the gift of salvation in my heart. I pray over my food, not because mama taught me to, but because I'm thankful and I want it blessed. We must see, we must hear, and not be guilty of what the word calls seeing and not seeing, hearing and not hearing. The sacredness of what he has done should be something that helps us to pay close attention and to not take it lightly. Would you stand with me this evening? In Luke chapter 9, verse 15, the Bible says, When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. See this thing which the Lord has told us about. Taking reverently and seriously everything that the Lord has done for us your devotion, your commitment, your attendance to worship, but your worship every hour, every minute of your life. These things are what we hold close and dear to our own hearts. May our hearts be moved again. Kathy sings a song I love, one of my favorites in the whole world. She sings a song, says, move me with your message once again. Move me with your message once again. Sometimes we become so callous. We treat his grace so carelessly. Move me with the message of the cross, of the tree, of the star, of the angels, of the shepherds, of the wise men. Searching him out in truth, reverence, and sacredness. May that be the challenge tonight. We've heard Christmas for weeks. Tonight, it's about just being real, not taking it for granted, and asking him to move us, move us again with that message. Father, as we come before you tonight, we honor you and bless you and thank you, Lord, for all that you've given to us. I praise you for your Holy Spirit that's at work in this world. I thank you, God, that you've kept your hand on this church through the years. I thank you, Lord, that you've blessed us and honored us to be vessels that are being used in this hour and this day, this most important time in history. Thank you, Lord, for the promises that you're soon coming. I thank you, Lord, that you've anointed the ministries of our church, that you've touched us together, Lord, to move forward in all that you are doing in these last hours and last days before you come. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being our salvation. Thank you for the Redeemer promised who has come. Thank you. Thank you for the joy in our hearts. Thank you for the peace that we experience that surpasses all understanding. Thank you, Lord. Be with us as we're challenged in this new year to pull our families close together. To, Lord, bring that family altar back close in our hearts and lives. To bring our children together and tell them again about the story and what it really means 
touch our hearts, God, as we kneel before you, even tonight before we retire and we look up and we are so thankful for salvation that flows into our life, the promise of eternal life in our very bosom. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We honor you today. Lead us into this next year, every family, every ministry of this church, our community, every church on every corner. God, touch them. Touch pastors this year. Lord, we're closer to your coming than we've ever been before. Pray that you'll anoint all of us, Lord, for the work of the mission of Jesus. Come to the earth to destroy the works of the enemy, to save the lost. And we ask all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone together said amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. Thank you for coming out to our service. I know we started a half hour earlier than most would have known. And I think, uh, yeah, Deanna's looking at me. <laughs> seven, th- seven o'clock tonight. But God bless you. Merry Christmas. And we'll see you on Sunday morning at 10 a.m.